Hey, good morning and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photography Weekly. This is episode number 60 for Sunday, June the 10th, 2012. Coming up in today's show, Polaroids on a table, get out. Can we do that? I think you can and it looks pretty cool. I've been thinking about doing this one for a while and I thought today's the day I'm going to show you how to do this. Next, we, somebody asked in a Google Hangout or Facebook or we were chatting somewhere and somebody said about creating actions how do you create actions those are those great little add-ons that we put into our photoshop elements but you can't create them there but i'm going to show you how you can create them in photoshop and uh, pretty much all the photoshops will do it so whatever version you have you should be okay uh, i have to be using cs6 this morning just because i have it uh, and that's what i'm going to be showing you uh, how to create a action and what are actions and how are they used then we have a big announcement coming up here after the uh, the topics and the show here. Uh, give you my announcement. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with Photography Weekly, episode number sixty. Okay, anybody notice I hit the wrong button? You know, that happens sometimes. You click the wrong thing and something goes crazy and you look like, what the heck is that? Um, and I knew that intro starts pretty fast. And then when that when the ad started up, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That doesn't even make sense. Anyhow, let's go ahead and give our official shout outs. Now, believe me, if you're in there watching this video, I appreciate you being here. And I'm glad you're hanging out with us today, being one of the live viewers on Vaughn Live with us to learn some more about photography. But we always ask that you come over to the chat room. So one, that, that we know you're there. Two, that I can acknowledge you being here. This is the time of morning we do our official shout outs. So let's go ahead and do that. Good morning, Kevin. Good to see you in there this morning. Good morning, Charmaine, Cheryl, Debbie, Flyer here, Jeff, guest one, two, three, four, and five, Jeff, uh, June, Pete, and Serena, good morning to everybody in there, and Cheryl. I think Cheryl jumped out of there right before I gave those intros, so maybe I did miss you. Okay, now that we got all of our official uh, shout-outs there this morning, and we have some more folks coming in there, some more guests, by all means, you know, if you want to come in as a guest, come in there. If you want to change your nickname, you can change it and uh, let us know who you are, but we like to see you chatting in the chat room. That's what makes this show more uh, interactive, I guess, with everybody out there. So first today I talked about, we're going to talk about how to put Polaroids onto a table. Does that even make sense? Well, I've been thinking about doing this for a while, and I thought I would go ahead and share this with you today on how to create this. And um, it's probably not the newest things you've ever done, but it's going to be interesting and new to some of you, and maybe a refresh to some of the rest of you. So let's go ahead and we'll start with that and work our way through that uh, demonstration. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is we are going to simply show you how you can take your pictures and put them basically on a table, a tabletop. And the reason I wanted to show this to you is very simply, just it's a nice effect. It's just something I think you're going to like to play with. Um, or if you're doing, uh, a lot of you out there are doing photo sessions, this is a great way to present these to your customer. They may really enjoy this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to tell you to do is find a tablecloth. That's what I looked for and that's what I wanted to put my pictures on top of. So first I wanted to find a tablecloth and I found this just by simply going to Google and then clicking on images and typing in tablecloth. And you can find that or tab table covering would work. Here's a suggestion I have for you when you go to do this. Make sure that you get the large file. If you get a small file, it won't work. You're going to have a lot of troubles with it. And then when you go to print it, next, naturally it's going to be pixelated and it's not going to look really that great. So here is one. This is a tablecloth pulled out onto a top of a table. But what I've seen right away with this that I did not want 
is I didn't want all of the uh, border on here. I didn't want the um, whatever this is up here. And I'm not even sure what that is. You know, it almost looks like some kind of a tile floor. So I don't know where this, th this thing is actually sitting at. So the first thing I'm just going to do is I'm just, uh, anything I want to get done there was simply crop it out. All right, we're going to pull this over a little bit. Or Debbie said that's a good idea, Deb. Take a picture of yourself. And actually, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to actually go out and start getting some background pictures uh, because you guys seen my YouTube video on green screen photography. Okay, so we have a picture. We have our tablecloth that I found online. And like Deb said, you can actually take this yourself at home and use your own picture. By all means, that's a great idea. The next thing we want to do with this is I want to start adding my pictures to this. So I have four pictures opened up here. Yep, that's me with that great hat on. And that's a that's a vacation picture from long ago, another vacation picture, and that was in Mexico. So what we wanted to do here was we're going to make our Polaroids. Now we've all made Polaroids before, and I know we've done we've touched base with this, but maybe you aren't here for that show. So I'm going to show you how to make the Polaroid step by step that we're going to be placing on that tabletop. <coughs> okay, so here we go. First, I'm going to revert this image and take that off. Now, what you should do always is create a background copy. Just duplicate that image or make a duplicate of your background copy, I should say. And I did that simply by pressing Command J or Control J on your PC. And that will duplicate the layers. Again, we are working today right now in Photoshop Elements 10. But this will also work in your Photoshop Elements 5, 6, 7, and 8, or even 9. Now what we want to do is we want to go up here to Image, and I found it's best to resize these. So let's go to Image Size. Make sure on the bottom it says Constrain Proportions. Because if you have this unchecked, here, watch what happens to this picture. Let me see if we can show you this. We're going to change the width to something ridiculous, like 600. Watch what happens. Because it's not measuring the height based on the width, so what happens is the picture pulls together. That's one of those oops. So you have to go up to edit. Let's revert that. And now we'll go to image. Let's go to resize, image size. And this time, turn on constrain proportions. That's what that does. You can see now how they're linked over here. And if you can't quite see that on your full screen, I know all you guys and girls out there are full screen right now. You can definitely uh, see that on your own computer. Let's change the width now to, let's just say 800. And what happens is it changes the height automatically for us. And we click OK. Now it keeps everything in proportion. So it doesn't make you look like a skinny, tall guy. Wait, that's a good idea. No, I'm just kidding. All right. And I didn't duplicate my background. I know a lot of you are saying, Jack, it's not duplicated now because I reverted. That's what happened. Now we want to go ahead and we're going to create that Polaroid around the outside of this image. You're thinking, wow, that's, that would be pretty cool. But I mean, how would you do that? Well, it's not really that hard. Let's go back to image, resize, and we're going to go to canvas size. So we're going to make the canvas larger than the picture is what we're going to work on here. When I first started doing this, I thought, would it stretch the image? But then I found it does not stretch the image. The image is anchored wherever you want to anchor it, top, bottom, left, right, or dead center. I just have the image dead center. <coughs> now, here's the new size, right? Here's the size currently right here, 11 by 8. So we're going to take that, and I usually take it two above. So I'm going to do 14. And here's 8, so I'll do 10. And we're going to see what it looks like. One word of advice. Down here where it says canvas extension color, click this 
by default, mine was coming up with the foreground color. So if your foreground color is blue, that's how mine was coming up. So make sure it's white. You could use other colors, but I'm just saying a Polaroid was always white. Click OK. Now, if you look at that, you'll say, well, that looks pretty good. But then again, it looks a little large to me. So then I'm going to go ahead and go to image, go back to canvas size, and let's change it. It looks like there's too much width. So maybe I'll change this and we'll do 13. And you can see now it looks more like a Polaroid. So if you make a mistake, take your time and go back and redo it. It's no problem. It's not going to hurt anything to do that. All right. Now with this picture, we're going to do the same thing. First, I want you to resize it. And that's going to become pretty apparent in a few minutes here. I'll show you why we want to resize it first. Go to image size. And this one here was obviously taken with a better camera than the other one. You can see the width and the height. So let's take the width. Already it says constrain proportions. It's checked. Once you check that, it's going to stay checked. Now on the width, we're going to change the width to it's 2336 right now. So let's just take it down to uh, 1500 and see what we come up with. All right. So there you go. We resized that picture. And again, this is just based on your own personal taste. And I'm going to show you why when we pull this into our other part here to start uh, building this tablecloth picture we want to do. Now we're going to do image. Then we're going to do the canvas size. Again, the width is almost 21, so let's say 22. The height is saying 31. Let's say on here, let's say 33 and see what it looks like. That's not bad, but I think we can make it a little bit extended more. So again, go back to canvas size. And we're going to go width. We're going to go 23. And height will do 34. There you go. So that looks like a pretty good Polaroid. And you, I'm using four pictures today. You could do many more than this. You could do as many as, uh, pictures as you want, but I'm just using four just to get along here. Again, go to image size. All we're doing basically, we're sizing these images down. But you notice what I'm not doing? I'm not doing a file save. I don't want my pictures to be small when on the computer, but for this particular project, we are shrinking them down just to use them in the project. And when I close them, we will not save those changes, so we're not going to save that smaller size. Again, with let's do uh, 1500. See what happens. There we go. And so you see a lot of this. I wish I had that perfect answer for you. A lot of people always email me and say, Jack, do you have the exact uh, diameter, the exact size that you would use, the exact width and height? And honestly, I don't. It's basically a personal taste uh, to me how I want to edit my pictures and pull those in. These, matter of fact, uh, for the Canon folks out there, these were taken with the Canon. Uh, at that time, I don't remember which Canon I have, I, What which Canon... Canon camera I had, uh, but I believe these were taken. I think it was the Rebel, if I if I was right. Um, so at one time I did have a Canon, just to let you guys know. The width. Uh, so we're going to make the border now. The width we're going to make it. It's almost 21. We're going to do 23, and this is 31.25. On this one we're going to do 33. See what it looks like. That looks fairly good. I think we'll live with that one. And on this one, same thing. Let's do a resize. People will be saying in the chat room. People will be saying in the chat room that, uh, <coughs> Jack, you're going over and over and over this. But you know what? That's how we learn it. Again, we're going to go here. And I think we're going at 15. Something like that. Image size. And canvas size. 
the canvas size here we're gonna do uh, 23 by 33 that looks like that looks pretty good somebody asked why when did I switch over to the dark side from Canon to Nikon uh, I was a Nikon shooter uh, for you know for a long time before that and I, when I bought my first 35 millimeter digital camera I said wow that the Canon Rebel was a decent price uh, and they were one of the first on the markets and I thought I'm going to buy it it's a consumer camera so I'm going to pick it up and uh, when I went on this vacation I came home I don't know if you can see this or not I'm going to try to blow this up a little bit for you so you can see this uh, let's see but this is what I found. Oops. Let's go back just one here. What I found was right here. Let's try to bring this over here. You can see that black dot. I found that, and there's a dots over a couple dots over here. When I called Canon, they said, well, I don't know. It could be a dirty sensor. Because the lens was perfectly clean. I cleaned that over and over and over. Um, so I bought a lens sensor cleaning kit. Cleaned the sensor five times. And it was still doing it. Every time I point up to the sky to take a picture, I would get those. So it could very well be some kind of hot spots or something. I don't know. But every sky picture I took had that in it. So that's what switched me back over to the being a Nikon guy. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Now we got to get these pictures onto our tablecloth. Sounds pretty easy. We're going to go up and do a select all. Or you can do a command or control A. Do a command or control C that will copy it. When you're on here, if you do a edit and do a paste or a command or control V. This is on PC and Mac. These are shortcuts. We can paste it. But wait, you say, hmm, it didn't come over with it. The border didn't come over. What happened? Well, here's what happens. Let's go back here. Uh, we're going to take that off. Yeah. Delete that. Okay. And we go back here. So when we go to edit, instead of just copying... We got to copy merged. So we want to copy the whole thing. Now let's try to put it back on here. Now you can see we have the actual border. So be, ca be, be careful. Be careful when you're working with the um, layers. Because on layers what's going to happen is. You want to make sure you get both layers. You're going to need both layers when you're copying it over. So always copy merged. But this is why we've been resizing those images, folks, because they get really, really big on here. And if you put a full resolution image on here, it takes you a long time to pull it from the corner. And I know you can resize it on here. It takes a long time. Let's go over now. We're going to resize it, though. Again, we're going to start pulling from the outside in. And when you do this, make sure up here on the left, on the top, it says there's a checkbox. And it says constraint proportions again make sure that is checked because then as you're dragging this thing around you don't have to hold any keys on or anything you can just drag this around resize it put it where you want it and we're going to turn it a little bit so we're basically laying these on our table click ok let's go to the next picture here's the next one we're going to do a select all and we're just going to copy because I didn't make uh, my duplicate there. And we're going to do a command or control V. Paste it on there. Now look how big that one is. I should have resized it down more. But it's okay because you can drag the top. Like I said, you can resize it here. So as you're doing these and do more and more of these, you're going to write it down in your notes and say, well, that's what I resized it to. And you're going to be really happy you did. And everything's going to look fine to you. So we're going to resize this one to where we want it. We're going to turn it. You can turn these any way you want. I mean, however you want to lay them on your table. 
and hit the checkbox. Like I said, you don't have to do um, you don't have to do four. You could do more than four. All right, here's another one. Select all. Somebody in the chat room is right. This is Mexico. This is actually mine and my wife's honeymoon we went on. Again, you can see it's very big. So just pull it down. If you got it too big and you didn't resize it quite right, just grab it by the corner. I'm using the left corner or the right corner, whichever. And just keep dragging it to the center. And that's going to make it so you can resize your picture. So, because these cameras shoot such big images. And we're going to pull this one over here. Turn a little bit. And maybe we'll turn it this way. Leave the corner on top of that corner. This is also a great way, um, if you're a scrapbooker, to make scrapbook pages. And we'll grab this one. Again, select all. And then control or command C. And then click on your background or your tablecloth and click command or control V. And let's resize this one. And we'll pull this down here. And maybe we'll put this one. Eh, doesn't matter. Just stick it somewhere here. All right, and click OK. Now with those on there, it looks pretty good. You're like, well, that looks pretty neat. You know, Jack put some pictures on tablecloth. There's there's a couple things I noticed on this picture that I don't like. One, it's very, very flat. The picture looks flat itself. So what I wanted to do first of all was create a little wrinkle on that tablecloth. You know, if you throw pictures down the table and that tablecloth is there, Unless you iron your tablecloth every day, I know it's not that flat. So let's double click on the background or the tablecloth. Why do we do that? Wow, Jack, why do we do that? Well, the reason I do that is because I want to unlock that background image. Why do you want to unlock it? Because if it's locked, you can't edit it. We want to do an edit on that tablecloth. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to filter. Now I'm, I'm clicked on layer zero or the tablecloth layer. Click on there because that's what we're working with. Go to filter. Go to distort. And I believe I used ripple. And what ripple is going to do is allow you to actually ripple that up. Just to, You want to ripple just a little bit so it looks like there's a little bit of creases and crinkles in there. There we go. So now it just gives it a little bit different look of the texture. So that's the first step, how we want to uh, clean that up and make it look more interesting. Next, I'm going to click on layer four or the topmost layer. What I want to do there is I'm going to create a drop shadow on that picture. So if I go up under effects, And if I click on layer styles, so under effects, this is on the right now in the panel. Under layer styles, click the drop box and click on drop shadows. I'm using a hard edge shadow. Now you can use any shadow you want. I kind of like the hard edge because I like the way it looks on the picture. Let's go ahead and click on apply. You can see right here now around that picture, right on this one right here, the stone uh, pillar. Look at that. Now there's a shadow. Why do we want that? We want that because we want our pictures to look like they're getting some kind of light, like they're laying on the table. And look, folks, I know from the past when we did these different tutorials, you don't want to double click your FX and you don't want this distance to be too far. Because what happens is you give it the effect that the pictures are floating off the table. 
pictures do not float off the tables, folks, unless you have some kind of poltergeist in your house or some kind of a spirit that lifts the pictures off your table. They don't float on tables. We've seen some of this when we were doing the puzzle pieces a while back. So we want to take that distance and we're going to drop it down. We want it to be a little closer, just enough so you can see. Oh, you have a little shadow there. The size, you can play with the size. And the opacity. Now for the new folks out there saying, what is opacity? Opacity is how much we're blending it into the back or being able to see it. I get this distance more out there just a little bit. All right. Now, okay, so then now what do we do? Now we write these down, right? 8, 19, and 81 because we want to duplicate each one of those. So we're going to write those down. 8, 19, and 81. We want them all to be the same. Now, Jack, you wouldn't do that. Of course you wouldn't, right? We have to know a keyboard shortcut to make those all the same without worrying about remembering numbers. That, that would be kind of weird. Okay, click OK. On the little FX right here, on layer number four, on the little FX, hold your Alt key down on your keyboard, click on it, and drag it down. Click on it, and drag it down again. Holding the Alt key down on your keyboard, and I'm just left-clicking on the FX and dragging it down. When I did that, look at all the pictures now. Now click on this background so we can see them. They all now have the exact same drop shadow. And I think I believe myself enough where I'm going to double click this and show you those same numbers. 8, 19, and 81. 8, 19, and 81. We didn't have to remember those numbers. So there you go. It was very easy to do that. Once we have this all done, this image is ready to go and be sent out to our developer or printed at our house, whichever way you prefer to do your pictures, uh, to print these off. And you can do things like if you're doing scrapbooking, uh, you can add some text to this. and uh, Or even if you want to add text to this either, like, you know, something like your summer vacation uh, or whatever you want to use it, you know. Uh, you can add vacation. If I can type, um, you can resize this, you know, move it around. Now, once you get it all done and you get it the way you want it, let's just, I'm going to take that text out. I don't like it in there. We do a... Go to layers. Now, here's the trick. A lot of new folks in there are saying, Jack, if I go to layers and I merge this down, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is you can't edit it any longer. Okay. Um, so what I would do is save it as a PSD file with my layers available or, you know, visible. And then you can merge it down. But I have an even easier way for you. Just go to edit. I mean, file. Under file, do a save as. And let me see, we're going to put this picture out here. Under pictures. You know, why don't I have a folder under pictures that says class? I don't know. And we'll give it a name, table. So PSD, if you save it as a PS, PSD, that's a Photoshop development file. That's going to be so it saves those layers so you can work on it again. This format is JPEG. What JPEG is going to do is it will compress this image down so then we can send it to developers without us having to flatten those layers. It's going to ask you the quality. What quality do you want your pictures to be, folks? Anybody know? I know. I heard somebody out there saying you want the maximum quality. And you're right. Unless. Here's an unless. Unless you know that you're going to save this image and put it on a website, right? It's just for the web. You're never going to print it out. Then I take these and I strip this down to about six because it makes the file size smaller and it loads a lot quicker on your web pages. But for printing, I do 12. I'm going to now show you, well, I'm going to attempt to show you. Hopefully I can show you this picture. 
Uh, made a folder here called class. And here we go. We're going to show you this. Show you with my preview. I think we can do this. And there it is. So it saved it. It compressed it down. It has all my features I wanted. My drop shadows. Everything's on there. It looks really nice. It's great. I'm going to take it to Kinko's or, or the Walmart or wherever you get your pictures done. Um, or my favorite place is Smug Mug. So you can send them out to Smug Mug and you're going to have those developed. Very, very simple. Now, we talked earlier, and I'm just going to show you this real quick as I'm closing out my Photoshop elements because I'm done with this uh, video tutorial. If I quit, it's going to ask me, do I want to save each one of these pictures? Hit don't save. Because what's going to happen if you save those pictures, it's going to save the resizing. So we don't want to save that. Okay. So with that said, I see we got some more people in there this morning. Good morning, Mike. I see you're in there with us now. Um, see if anybody else came on board there that I might have missed earlier. Andy Taylor. I did miss you earlier. And Sharon. And Jody. And Jamie. So I missed a few of you earlier, but you're here now. Jake the Snake, good morning to you. Glad you came aboard. So does anybody have any questions with that particular tutorial? Anything that you might want to be clarified on? I'm just going back here to read through the chat room a little bit. Uh, let's see. And you're right, June. You will. Yeah. June, do this with some wedding pictures, especially if you have some lace or something. Um, and this is nice, too. I like taking some wedding pictures. Here's a, here's a thought for you that I like to do. We take a picture of the bride's gown before and use that as a backdrop. You know, pieces of the gown, uh, any lace uh, that the bride might be wearing. The, um, the hair piece, also the veil, makes a really nice one. So, And then put those pictures on there of the wedding. They get blown away. You know, you see a little tear in their eye, and uh, that equals dollars for you. So, in your bank account, um, you know, if you create it, they shall buy. That's what I said. So, that's my saying. Um, all right. So, Kevin says you can also drag the lock to the trash. I never tried that, Kev. Thanks for the pointer. That's a good pointer. Never tried that one. And flyer here that's a good idea the wedding names and dates of the wedding that would be really nice a lot of people buy those for thank you cards and then it does it, it they sell all right let's see here and you're right sharon that's what you did you hold the alt key down and pull the fx down and as you pull that down it's actually copying that to each layer it works really really well and I do it individually. I don't, I've never tried it to click on one and just drag it. I've never tried to do that. But maybe that's possible. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so that's... Yeah, you were asking how you would... I see what you're saying, Sharon. And somebody said, let's not get ahead of the teacher. That was nice flyer here. I appreciate that. But sometimes there's a delay with the chat windows as fast the chat windows are chatting faster than the audio and the voices coming out to you guys so that is a little bit of an issue and i know it's there but that's part of broadcasting that's what happens so and sharon sharon you don't have to smack your hand you're fine you're fine no problem at all i, I like you know i love the input uh the chat room makes the show that's that's what makes it important to be here so I'm just going to go back here real quick just to look and uh, see where we're at here. Eh, we're at about 26. That's pretty good. Okay. 26 live viewers. That's what I was just checking to see how many people's in there. Okay. So let's go ahead. We're at the uh, half hour point here. So we are going to go ahead with our uh, advertising spot that I like to play now. And when I come back, we're going to be learning, for those that wasn't here in the opener, we're going to be learning actions. Um... Basically, uh, I know a lot of you are just starting to use actions and you're like, wow, 
We didn't know these existed. This is great. I know a lot of people I know personally that buy actions. I'm going to show you today how to make actions, how to make your own actions. I think that's really important to know how to do. Um, can save you a ton of money. And more than that, it'll save you a ton of time in editing. Okay, with that said, we're going to go into our next tutorial. Uh, Jody was just asking, can you, oh, can you do that in Elements? Um, and I don't know what you're asking about. You might want to clarify that a little bit. Can you use actions in Elements? Yes. And if you go back to my YouTube videos, and uh, for those of you that don't know my YouTube channel, it's 42, the number 42, Technoman. Matter of fact, uh, let me just put these in there and uh 42 techno man let me see if i can uh, stick this in the chat room if you're not subscribed to my youtube if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel please go ahead and do that and that'll take you to all my youtube videos and it's in there how to load actions into your photoshop elements and i'm sure i can do some updated ones um and you know to get you more acquainted with that but there's a lot of tutorials out there on how to load elements or load actions in elements and there's a lot of places that sell those actually also uh, they sell actions but i'm the kind of guy that i'm kind of a do-it-yourself guy one i like to do my own editing i don't want to buy an action to put raindrops on my picture i'd rather create the raindrops myself and do my own editing two <laughs> i don't want an action to to uh, change the exposure of my pictures because maybe it's not the exposure I want. Maybe I want to create the exposure because you know, you're taking the pictures, you know what they need more than anybody. Now there are some cool actions out there. I'll give you, I found an action a while back, like for creating Polaroids. We did it ourselves very simply. So would you pay $50 for that action? I don't think so. You can do it in a couple minutes. Why would you pay for an action? But regardless, I'm going to show you how to create those. Here's the catch. To use an action, you can use them in Photoshop Elements. To make a action, you have to make them in Photoshop. So if you have purchased a Photoshop, if you have, you know, Photoshop, I don't know, 4, uh, 4, 5, CS5, CS5.1, and now CS6 is out. Uh, if you purchase that, then you can create actions. And if you get good enough at it, you can save those actions and sell them to people that want to buy those in Photoshop Elements or Photoshop. That's where a lot of people get that idea. I can make something and it's really cool, so I'm going to sell it. And that's that's another avenue that you may have. So, so yeah, uh, Jody, hopefully that uh, clear that kind of answers it. Thanks, Kev, uh, to how that action actually ha happens. <laughs> So with that said, let's all go full screen now, go back to the uh, computer here, and we're going to do some photo editing again. But this time, we're going to be in Photoshop CS6, just what I'm using right now. Uh, but if you have CS5 or whatever, you're going to be just fine. What we're going to do first is when you have your Photoshop open, now like I said, CS5, 6, whatever you're running, you go under Window. I don't know why they put this there. I would think it would be under View, like View Different Screens. But under window, I guess because it's different windows, you're going to want to turn on actions. So you can see the actions panel. And when you do that, you're going to have the actions panel over here on your right. But this is your action panel right here. Now, I say it's going to be very hard to do this because it's going to be hard to see it. I don't think if I minimize this, does it stay there? Yeah, it does. Let me see if I can do this now. Nope. It's not allowing me to do it. All right, let's go back up here. So on this actions palette, what we want to do is we want to create a new action. Now to create a new action, I don't know how I got that select in there. there. To create a new action, go down to the bottom. And there's a new thing that says create a new set. What you want to do first is you want to create a set for your actions to be in. 
because I don't want these under default actions like it's up here now because that's the actions that come with Photoshop so I'm going to just close this little triangle at the top I'm going to click on the triangle and close it up and I'm going to click on create a new set now this new set I'm just going to name it personal and click OK now under personal I'm going to create just, it looks like a new layer but it's a little piece of folded paper and that's actually a new action so let's create a new action <coughs> and just uh, for the demonstration purposes here we're going to show you how to create this new action and I'm going to do some weird things so this is probably what you won't want to do but I want to show you how the actions work so we're going to create a new action and we're going to call it exposure exposure click on OK now as soon as you click on OK it's going to turn on the recording so what's it recording is it recording me right now my voice no is it recording the whole screen uh, if I double click on another window on my computer will it record that no it's not a screen recording what it's recording it's recording your actions get it that's why it's called an action it's going to record every action you create on this particular picture that's why this is called an action. Now let's go ahead and start that. So first thing we're going to do is click under um, image adjustments and I called it exposure so first of all let's play with the exposure. Here's our exposure. I click on her uh, white let's click on her white uh, gown here and now I can set the exposure I can raise it lower it down bring it up we're gonna bring it up now again this is why I'm doing this let's say you just took a picture a birthday pictures right you're at a birthday party you're shooting all these pictures and you come home and the first one's underexposed the next one's underexposed the next one's underexposed you could bring these up in Lightroom and expose them all right you can raise them all one at a time or if we have an action we can use that action on other pictures that's why you want to create an action that's what they're for it's so we can do the same set of instructions on multiple photos all right so what I'm going to do here just so we can see on this demonstration that what's happening we're going to raise the exposure and click OK as soon as I do that we'll notice over here under my actions now there's a little one here that says exposure and if I click this, it's going to tell me the exposure and what I just set it at. The little pull down. And I'm bad at that. I've got to remember, this is also going on iTunes on audio. If I click the pull down triangle in front of exposure, it's telling me what the presets are. So what's the next thing I'm going to do here? The next thing I'm going to do is we are going to go adjustments and let's do something like hue and saturation again I'm just going to play with this picture because I want to show you the power of an action we'll just discolor it here so you can see how this is working click OK again when we do that over on the right under our action we can see it says hue and saturation and we'll go to filter and let's see what we can do with filter here let's do something like uh, lighting effects these all of our different lighting effects over here once my computer catches up to it here maybe we won't do lighting effects oh there we go so again we can bring this lighting effect down we could do anything we want to with it something like that we can raise it up a little bit once we're done we'll click OK at the top rendering lighting effects takes a little bit of time uh, so maybe that wasn't a good effect to pick but I'm trying to make this as a interesting demonstration as possible so there it is the lighting effect is in there now so we have that 
So once you have all of your actions that you want to do on a particular picture, now this is extreme, and uh, you know I don't want a bunch of email from you folks out there saying, Jack, that picture really totally stank, or it stinks because I know it stinks. Come down at the bottom, and we're going to hit the little stop button. The little stop button is from the little red button to the left. Click on stop. Now that stops recording anything you're doing in Photoshop. So now we're done. It stopped. Now we want to apply that same effect to another picture. Okay, let's open another picture. Here's another picture. Let's see how it's going to play out here. I click on exposure and I come down here and I'm going to click on run or play selection. When I click on play selection, it's going to start working. And as you can see, it added all those effects on there. If you want to change any of the effects on your action, if you double click it, you can actually change the effect because as you see, this light did not fall exactly where we wanted it to be. So you want to uh, open this light up or something and move it around. Change your hot spots. So that is basically what an action is. Just hit cancel on this one. And then I was telling you earlier, there is a way and I won't do it here in this particular tutorial because I'm going to get way ahead of where I wanted to be. But there's a way you take this action. We can actually take this. And you can take these actions and save them out of here. Just by clicking up here on the top pull down menu. And you can actually take these and save your actions out. See where it says save actions? You save these actions and then you can create a name for those and that is the actions that you would take and import into Photoshop Elements or sell to somebody if you want to sell those out. But that's one reason I always like to make a new set so you always know what they are going to be. There you have it. Okay, Kev, have a good day. Well, wait, when he says he's going, he's going, huh? That was fast, like, boop, on. All right, so there you have it. Okay, folks, so that's actions. That's all it is. Uh, very easy, um, you know, and uh, like Kevin said, he said he uses both uh, Photoshop Elements and CS6. I do the same. Probably 90% of my editing, though, I like to do in Photoshop Elements. Um, I use CS6 for things like that, like building actions and different uh, type of things that I want to do that way. Um or, you know, any specializing type of edit that I might want to play with or do. I use uh, Photoshop, the whole Photoshop. <coughs> but that was just another way. I just wanted to show you how to do that edit. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions. Let me see. Uh, and Serena said she has Portrait Professional. I do have that also. I really enjoy Portrait Professional. Um, but I'm sure you already know, Serena, pay very close attention to the sliders where it says face, facial sculpturing because it makes people look like a porcelain doll. So be very careful with that. Uh, but I think it does a wonderful job very quickly. It looks really, really nice. All right. Okay. So I just wanted to catch up on that. Let me bring up my notes here. <clears throat> okay, so there was also a very important announcement in this uh, tutorial today that I wanted to bring up. Since we, we didn't obviously have a show last week, uh, there were some uh, issues, uh, some household issues I don't really want to get into, but um, things I have to take care of and uh, things that's ongoing that need taken care of. So um, that is why I'm bringing these notes to you today instead of having a... We usually have our tribute to our... our um, our assignment, but there was no assignment last week. Sorry about that, but things do take uh, things do take priority in, in life, and uh, that's kind of what happened there. So, want to let you know 
and please pass this message around that this is the final show of this season. People are always like, Jack, podcasters and vidcasters don't have seasons like TV. Um, but with the current situations that I have uh, happening, um, I'm going to have to just use this show right now as a, as a break uh, in the season here. I'm planning on returning on September 16th. So mark your calendars. September 16th, 2012. So there'll be a little break here over the summer, and that'll give you guys time to travel and take great pictures. I know you're uh, fantastic photographers. Get out there and get those shots done. Uh, again, so that's the live shows. Now, with that said, the live shows, are, we're taking a, taking a break now. Uh, so the season's going to be over here today at show number 60. Returning on September 16th, with that said, I want you to keep being subscribed and keep watching the YouTube videos. I can produce those pretty much on the fly whenever I got time to sit down. It doesn't take as much. Uh, an hour show takes, you know, a couple days sometimes or at least a 12 hour prep to do an hour show like this. YouTube videos are usually, um, I could do those in the middle of the night. I can sit down and pop out a video for you guys. So watch the YouTube videos. Follow that channel, 42, number 42, Techno Man. Follow that in the off season and you're still going to learn some great photography tips and tricks because I'm going to still be putting those out. Also keep up with the Facebook group. There's a lot of you in there. We post uh, pictures back and forth and I really enjoy that. So it's a good time. Uh, I keep up with the Facebook group on my cell phone on the fly when we're out. So I can talk to you guys there. And the Google Hangouts are a big plus for all of us to get together. So... With that said, please spread that word as well as it'll be on the Facebook group. I'll put it out there. But thank you very much for a great season so far this year. And like I said, we'll be back in September to pick up the new season uh, with new shows coming to you on Sunday mornings again at 10 o'clock. So thank you. And I really enjoy that. I'm just going to bring my chat window back up here for a few minutes and see what's going on there. Um. And I do appreciate that from everybody out there. Uh, like I said, I'll still be around you guys. Uh, the guys in this Google Hangouts, guys and girls, I'm sure we'll still get together and we'll still chit-chat. So we'll still be around there. But the morning show, this live show, is just going to be next season. So, But thanks. I'm glad that everybody's out there. I'm glad you're still going to be watching. Um, and I'm sure we'll still get, be getting together here soon. So I appreciate all the well wishes. And... Um, Again, today, a very, very busy day. So I got a lot to do, a lot to get involved here. So um, we'll be talking to you very soon. But watch the YouTube videos. Keep up on those. I got some ideas clicking in my head. If you have any questions, email me, jackstechcorner at gmail.com. The date again in September is going to be September 16th. It's already on my calendar. September 16th, 2012. It's Sunday morning. We're going to fire back up. So um, maybe we'll do this with a with a seasonal thing. I don't know how we'll do this just yet, but um, that's my plan. So thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great Sunday morning. Hopefully you learned something today. And until next time, as always, and I'm always telling you this, keep those cameras clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back very soon around September 16th and on the YouTube videos. Bye, and thank you for all of your support, and uh, I'll, I'll catch you later. Take care.